What's up everybody and welcome to my NXT review. Now I believe NXT is taped for the next two weeks. I believe they are working on the new set for NXT. Given that they have gone back to black and gold. And I know some people are going to say, well it's white and gold. Well, like dude, the black background is still in the background. They've literally gone back to black and gold, okay. They just add a little white into it. I think to kind of trick people in a way. But like I said last week in the uh, one, one year anniversary slash retro, retrospective review we went over last week. Uh, really good review last week. Went about an hour or something talking about that show. And what now uh, is going to change. What is really going to change now in NXT. Because I expect a lot to, ha to happen in the next few weeks. But these shows are taped right now until we find out uh, in the next, uh, you know, next week, you know, the week after and whatnot. But I believe this is black and gold back at this point, okay? Like, I know some people, it's white and gold. Like, no, nah, dude, it's it's literally back to black and gold, okay? They, they You could still see the black. It's just white just to add on to kind of throw people off a little. It's back to black and gold. That's what it is in NXT. Like, I'll, I'll sit there and argue that. But um, NXT did start off, though. With um, Solo Sokoa and Carmelo Hayes going into Shawn Michaels' office. Uh, Shawn Michaels was there. He talked about uh, Solo saying, like, you know, you stepped up and you competed in a match that wasn't even sanctioned, okay? So you're going to have to give back the title. Uh, Solo says, you know, he was happy to finish his unfinished bi business in NXT. And, um, you know, beating Melo, saying he had, because he, he had to make sure he had next. Uh, Solo did give up the belt. Uh, Michael says, you know, your time in XC was staggering, and he wished him well in his future in the WWE, wherever he goes on Raw and SmackDown. Uh, but right after, you know, Solo left, Melo says, I got next now. But, and, you know, told Sean, you know, okay, I'll be taking my belt back. But Sean says, no, 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 you're not going to do that, okay? Uh, you tried to game the system. It's not going to work, all right? And, um... I respect that you're cocky, but you don't keep disrespect disrespecting the business. The business will slap you in the face. So now you will have another chance in a ladder match at Halloween Havoc. So uh, you're going to be in a ladder match with several other people for that title. So I was surprised that they had Solo literally give the belt back, I guess, one week after. So I thought they were going to do this whole bloodline dripped in gold thing and whatnot. But I guess that's been short-lived now because I'm like, what was the point of him even winning a title just to now give it right back? I was kind of surprised by that, so he won't be involved in this ladder match now, given that he's on Raw and SmackDown, the bloodline and stuff, so, um, yeah, I didn't really see what was the point now of him getting the belt, I don't know, kind of strange, maybe it leads to something else, I don't know, um, next, Axion went against Nathan Frazier, once again, they're sitting as best of three series, I thought the match was okay, um, you know, I had some, you know, weather problems over here. It was storming, so I only saw half the match. I figured Nathan Frazier was going to win because they want this whole best of three series to go to the end. So, um, Frazier, up get, Frazier ended up getting a win here. I guess the finals is next week. We'll see what happens then. Um, Alba Fire was cutting a promo on uh, Mandy Rose, talking about the NXT women's title. Uh, Toxic Attraction came in, asked Mandy if you're okay. And uh, Rose says, hey, I'm just going to, you know... I'm going to do my thing. I'm going to take out Fallon Henley next week. And then I'm going to get Alba Fire. Um, right after that, they went to a Damon Kemp video. Basically, explain his elaborate plan of how, you know, you know, taking out the creeds and costing the tag team titles. And how, you know, Roddy should have accepted Tony D'Angelo's bribe. But he didn't. Damon Kemp did. And basically, he had his plan to, uh, you know, they could have been the tag champions. But Santos ruined that for them. Um, basically, Kemp went on to talk about how, you know... What the, what the Diamond Mine has been doing, you know, what they've been doing and whatnot. And, you know, he should have accepted the bribe and everything. And talk about how he destroyed Roddy's phone that had the footage. I don't know why he didn't save it to anything else. And take out Roddy also and whatnot. Um, basically saying Roddy's still in the, in the hospital and everything. Uh, Kent basically says, yeah, I'll take on the, the Creeds, but only a one-on-one, -on -one, not a two-on-one. -on -one. So we'll see what goes on from there. Ivy Knight was still pissed off about what happened with uh, Kemp and the Diamond Mine. Tatum Paxley said, we got business to take care of ourselves. They basically went against Toxic Attraction. Toxic Attraction won. Penn and Ivy Nile that finished did not look good, by the way. Um, and wasn't that, but Toxic Attraction of getting the win over Nile. Maybe I'm surprised they actually pinned Nile and that um, Tatum Paxley and whatnot. that. But I guess given those Diamond Mine is broken up, maybe her mind is disheveled over it. I don't know. Um, Joe Gacy discount 
Bray Wyatt came out to cut some promo. I swear to God, I did not care, and it was dying a thousand deaths that the fans still could chant, continue to chant boring during a TV taping. This this gimmick is so bad. They went against um, Interest in Ofe and Malik Blade. Not a bad match. I'm, I'm just sick of the discount Wyatt family right now, okay? Like I said, I kind of feel bad for GYV right there, the Grizzly Young Veterans, to the Schism or whatever they're supposed to be right now or whatever new names they are at this point. The Dyads or what, whatever this is, okay? This gimmick sucks. It's not good, okay? This G Gacy is just discount Wyatt, okay? I've already seen enough wrestling druids as it is already. Uh, another Roxy promo talk about her match with Michael Sotomora. Talk about she earned Michael's respect. And, uh, talk about the bruises she took and how stiff it was. And, uh, you know, I already talked to Michael uh, t saying that Roxy has um, fighting spirit and whatnot. Basically talk about she's going to use that to go against Cora Jade. Uh, Cora Jade went against Wendy Chu. Um, Jade and I'm getting the win. I don't want to see another Roxy and Cora Jade match. I just don't even want to see that feud in general anymore. But that match was okay. Basically just a showcase for Cora Jade winning. Uh, right after that, Lash Legend of showing up kicking... Um, Wendy Chu, so I guess it's going to be a match with them next. Um, Quinn McKay from Ring of Honor. I guess she, I don't know how long she's been here on uh, NXT. Interviewing Oro Mensa. Uh, I guess he's from the UK. Talk about he's got a match against Great Grayson Waller tonight. See who's going to be in that ladder match going on. And talked about, you know, he's from Ghana. So, um, you know, gold is in his country and everything. Um... Melo and Trick came out then. Once again, I know this is tapes. I never even mentioned Shawn Michaels taking away the belt. But talked about, you know, uh, he should have been the biggest star. Melo went on and talked about, I don't care what bloodline you came from and everything. He wants his title back. Um, right after that, uh, Andre Chase and crew came out. Uh, Trick says, I don't care who y'all, y'all, y'all got to go. Um, Chase says, it's going to be a teachable moment, which Chase, you went against Melo and Trick. Where I'm actually surprised Andre Chase beat, um... You know, end up rolling up Mellow for the win. That's very surprising to see there. I'll say that. I didn't see that coming. Um, I know Mellow lost last week, but damn, it's like shit. He just took a loss and chase you. Um, that's that's very surprising. Gallus, I guess, had their own pub or something. Or basically, they've now become discount APA sitting in the back with a poker table and beer. And I'm surprised there wasn't a door right there. Um, Briggs and Jensen tried to tell them to go away, and um. So this is our pub. Next thing you know, security showed up as both groups was about to fight. So, yeah, it's like an APA segment for some reason. Sanga went against Von Wagner. Um, it's okay. Good big man match out there. Uh, Von Wagner ended up getting the win on um, Sanga and whatnot. So, um, it, it was pretty okay. Not bad of a match. I don't really got much to say from it. Um, Wesley was cutting a promo. Talking about he got taken out last week, but now he's going to be in that ladder match so he can qualify for it. So, um, he says he's going to get that North American title. Um, Cameron Grimes talked about he's going to take out Joe Gacy, I guess, in a week. Grayson Waller went against Oro, Oro Mensa. We didn't really get to see much of him out there. Um, he's not bad. It's my first time I've ever seen him. He's not that bad to what I've seen now. I'm sure the biggest thing out of this was Apollo Crews is showing up with a bloody eye. I guess the bloody eye means he cannot see into the future right now. His vision is his vision is flawed, okay? Or is flawed, so he doesn't have a clear vision. So how long has he been bleeding like that? And why doesn't a doctor come out and check him while his eye is just bleeding as he's just staring at Waller? Um Minson, I'm getting the win, but yeah, um, yeah, he can see into the future and now I guess he can't see into the future. They show another Sol Ruka video. Um, I guess she's going to be debuting next week, saying she's the spirit of the water. Um, Braun Breaker came out for the main event with Tyler Bate and JD McDonough to see who would get a shot in the NXT title. Very good match. And I enjoyed this match. Yeah, it was a great best match on the damn show, to be honest. Um, this was good. Really good. I enjoyed it. I like Tyler Bate. Um, McDonough, Devlin really good himself also, so I did enjoy this match, um, it ended up with McDonough getting the win with the, uh, the Devlin slide and whatnot, or the Devil Within, or whatever they're calling it and whatnot, but, uh, right after that, he had a stare down with, uh, Breaker, but the next thing you know, some music played, I didn't know who it was, it was Ilya Dragunov, as Devlin saying no, Dragunov is now back in the NXT, uh, you know, America one right now, 
I now listen, my co host actually saw NXT UK to where he was hurt, um, dragging on because that's why they had there was a new NXT UK champion, and uh, basically there was a tournament going on. Luckily, I guess whatever the injury was, it was not torn, so I was, I'm like, damn, he must have healed fast. But like, you know, once I was told the injury was not, you know, he was his whatever he got hurt was torn. I guess he wasn't hurt that bad and was able to get back a little bit faster. It was good to see Dragunov is okay and he's recovered. Uh, but yeah, I was actually surprised to see him here. Um, so yeah, we get, they brought in Dragunov back to the U.S. now. I thought he'd be hurt still, but uh, no, he is back. The only difference I already saw with NXT, if I get, can say the scenery-wise, was just showing the new logo and whatnot. Like I said, I expect a new set once they go back to being live again and everything, but um, and whatnot, but you know, this was, um, you know, the episode was okay. I'll say, like I said, this is a tape show, but I did enjoy the main event. I did enjoy dragging off me and back. Um, Solo having to give up the uh, North American title is now explained, so we saw that too. So, yeah, other than that, comment, subscribe, mommy on Twitter at Hood 8 I'll see you guys then. Peace out.